So you can see, I've done a, a bit more to the background. I worked on the background here, and this tree is a cutout, which I painted and mounted. I glued it in. I'll show you how I did that with some of the others. So I'm working on some of the other, they will be cutouts and pasted, they will be added. You can see she's at that stage. And he is at that stage. So it's coming along. Now I wanted to show you what the cutouts look like before I cut them out. That's what they look like when they're still on their paper. And you'll see they'll look a lot different when I assemble them onto the background. Okay, so the next step is to cut them out. Okay, so here we are back in the little studio. This is uh, my cutting board right now. So it also doubles as a light box. But right now it's a cutting board and I've just, as far as these images go, I've kind of just guessed at the values, the total values that I'm gonna be using. As I say, it's gonna look a lot different when we get it into the, uh, on the background. So I may have to adjust this quite a bit, we'll see. So anyway, I'm gonna turn them over now and I'll show you what cutting them out looks like. Cutting out is actually very boring. Here's the, the girl, the lady, and I'm gonna just start with my X-Acto knife. I'm gonna just start cutting out along here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna just follow these lines for the most part, just as I've done them. Sometimes I kind of change my mind a little bit as to what the actual size of the shape is or the shape itself. So I sometimes make last minute um, changes in the cutting. But once you made the cutting, that's it. You pretty much can't change the shape after that. You can make it smaller, but you can't make it larger. So I have the last little bits. It's gonna be the birdies in the tree, the dog. Uh, the birdies are pretty much ready to be cut out, I think. This is what they look like before cutting out. But I do have this last little bit here, the dog. So what I've done is I've got a selection of color. I've got oxide red, uh, some of that brown. It's a raw uh, sienna. A couple of yellows, yellow ochre, cadmium yellow. A bit of green in here as well, just because I think I'm gonna need a little bit of darkness in there. So I'm gonna mix the green and the red. I'm gonna grab a relatively this size of a brush. Again, very loose, this brush is almost worn out. Still very serviceable though. And I'm gonna start with, again, this kind of a neutral green-brown, right in, just in here. So I'm gonna just sort of tap it in like that. There's a couple of places where I just want to want to make sure I don't lose that dark. See, I'm kind of just dabbing the color on. And uh, start with a bit of this yellow, this iron oxide yellow, cadmium yellow, and iron oxide, a very nice color. I love this red, and I use it a lot. And I'm gonna just come in here. It's gonna be the highlights of the red. The dog is gonna be a, a foxy red, and it's gonna be similar to some of the colors that we see in the, in the girl. So I'm getting a little bit of darker red now, dabbing it on here and there. So you can see that I'm painting very, very loosely. Why? Because I'm going to be cutting it out and that's going to justify the shape. What I'm establishing now is the form within the shape. And like I said, I'm painting rather loosely. This can always be adjusted later too, by the way. So this red is really quite opaque. It's a, the iron oxide red is very, it's not transparent at all. You can see I'm just sort of very loosely and quickly dabbing away here this painting somehow reminds me that it somehow wants to be it wants to feel like an impressionistic painting i think but we're close to the end now this is what i've done with the dog i'm guessing that these values are going to be right for the picture but we don't know for sure until we see it installed there's the birdies that's what they look like before we cut them out a fair amount of guesswork involved, but I've done this a lot, so I, I think my guessing is fairly accurate. I don't anticipate having to do a lot of adjustments. We'll see, though. So we're back at the table. 
All right, so the doggy is going to go here, and there's going to be birdies up in the tree. There, I have the gentleman painted, and the lady, uh, the gentleman isn't quite finished yet. In fact, nothing is really quite finished exactly. But I'm at the stage now where I'm gluing them down, and I thought this would be a, uh, a good thing to show you because it's a little bit tricky, it's kind of technical, it has to be done carefully. So what I've done is I have uh, taped them into place with uh, just with transparent tape. There you can see it uh, here and there. I've already anchored the middle part with the glue. Okay, and so what I've done then is I've taken the gloss medium now, not the matte medium, the gloss medium because it has better uh, adhesion. And that's what I use for glue. If you do it properly, uh, it should pretty much be invisible. So I have anchored the middle part of the uh, gentleman cut out. And now I'm going to glue a little bit more. So I'm going to go back to where I established the glue before. And I'm going to just get some more glue on my palette knife. And I'm going to just put it in here. This is the bottom part. You can see that quite clearly, I guess. And I'm going to stick some glue here. I want to make sure that I don't have any gaps because it just makes for a better job if you, if you do it that way. This could take a little bit of, you know, trial and error. I've been doing it for years, so I'm, I'm pretty good at it. And okay, so I'm going to just do only so much. And then I take folded paper towel and I put that over and I and then I use a little roller to roll the to distribute the glue I do it in all directions and I want to make sure that if there's any of that gloss medium that is seeping out as there will be I want to pick that up that with the paper towel because that gloss will shine. You don't want that, I don't think. At least I don't. I want to keep it matte. I want to keep the finish matte. I don't like gloss, a glossy finish. Okay, so I've done that little bit. The nice thing about gluing a couple of pieces together at the same time is that you can stay busy. You don't have to wait for it to, to dry. So you just I'm just moving on to his leg now. He's got big clod hoppers, this guy. Good. So I'm going to just roll that down, put the leg down, do the same thing again. You may need at times, at least I find I, I need sometimes several layers of this uh, paper towel, especially when I'm gluing large areas. I can It works better to keep it at a more modest size, so more of an illustration size. So something like this or even smaller, uh, starting getting too large. The, the physical problems are magnified. So with working for large things, I don't often use the, the cutting and uh, pasting method. I just paint more directly right on the, on the surface. So here, she is already glued right through here. I don't need the tape anymore. I can take that off. Once it's anchored, it's not going anywhere. So I'll just do one more demonstration of working on her. You can see I've used a kind of a whole variety of reds in there. There's kind of orangey reds, there's pink, because she's a hot lady, and he's a cool dude. But does she like the cool dude? That's the question. So you see I've got a couple of layers of uh, paper towel here. So if, if you see that it's warping a little bit, if there's little bubbles, you can use more of this, or you can even use one of these, a bone. You can get these in certain art stores. They're, it's bone, and uh, it's shaped, and you can use it. You can go along the edges and make sure the edges are firmly down. And I don't see, oh yeah, okay, so there's a little bit of a gap happening in there. I can fix that right now. Just add a little bit more glue, push it in. Use a roller, push it in, push it in, push it in. Any excess gloss medium, pick it up. 
get rid of as, as much of that and it's showing up. In a nutshell, that is how the gluing technique is done. So I'm not going to uh, bore you with all the rest of it. It's going to take me a little bit of time. Essentially, the picture is going to be pretty close to finished, but I may do a little bit of fine tuning at the very end. You can see I have the uh, other two pieces taped in, and now all I have to do is glue them down. So I get the gloss medium out again, pour some of that. Uh, so this is a very thin bladed palette knife, and they work best because they are nice and thin. So I'm gonna just get some of that gloss medium, which I'm using as a glue, and I'm gonna peel this up, and I'm gonna just put a little bit of glue right in here. that down, paper towel. I start by just rolling it with my hands. Then I use the roller, make sure I mop up any excess that comes out through the edges. So I, I like to start in the middle of these and then work towards the end. That works well for me. So that's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna start in the middle of the doggy here. Lay it down. Paper towel, the hand, the roller, mop up any excess. So, okay, I can take the tape away now. Don't need that. You have to peel it off carefully. You don't, certainly don't want it to tear the paper or uh, remove some of the paint. That could be possible if the paint hasn't fully dried. I tend to be a bit impatient sometimes, and uh, I've had that happen to me. Okay, so I'm going to just go back to the bird now and do a little more gluing. This isn't going to take very long. As you can see, these are small pieces, so they're, I'll have them done in the next few minutes. The glue actually dries pretty quickly. That's what I like about uh, acrylic. I, I like the fact that it dries quickly. And sometimes if it doesn't dry quickly enough, I turn the, the hair dryer on it and, you know, make it dry even, even faster. And then let's do the tail of the dog now. And you want to make sure that you're going right back to the edge where the glue set the last time. You don't want to have any air pockets in there. So what I often do when I come in, say for the second time, is, okay, I'm going to lay this down, put this over, and then with my hand, I'm going to push it toward where the edge of the last glue was. So just so to make sure that it pull, pushes right in there. And as you can see in this case, I hope you can see this. The, the medium is uh, bleeding out. So I want to make sure I pick up most of that, as much of that as I can. Because when it dries, it will be glossy and unattractive. When you, when you do the roller, by the way, um, don't push really, really hard because you may end up pushing most of the glue out and then you'll have to re-glue it. Uh, so that's something that I learned. Uh, just a moderate amount of pressure is all you need. You don't need a whole lot. Um, for the most part, that's it. I've used this method for for years, when I was an illustrator, when I was doing editorial work, where the emphasis is mostly on painting, direct painting, I still go back to this because I find it very useful for certain effects and they, they give me shortcuts in a kind of way. It certainly has been valuable to me and I hope, where, however you apply this principle to your own work, I hope that it is also equally useful to you. Okay, goodbye for now.